Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Paddington Station here in London. Tonight I'm taking off something else on my British Railways bucket list. I'm finally taking the sleeper to Penzance. It's the Night Riviera. Let's go and check it out. Our journey begins at Paddington Station in London, my personal favourite of all London's magnificent railway stations. It's been serving the public since 1854, replacing a previous temporary station which itself dated from 1838. There's nearly 200 years of history here. This is one of the finest Victorian public buildings anywhere in the country and one of only six active railway stations listed at Grade 1, Historic England's highest ranking for exceptional historic or architectural interest. In recent years, a food court has opened near the main concourse, which is worth visiting if you've forgotten to have dinner before taking this unique sleeper train, which leaves close to midnight. I arrived early and collected my pre-purchased tickets from the machine. Booking in advance is highly recommended. The sleeper berths on this train can sell out very quickly. Let's talk tickets. For the sleeper berth like I'm taking, you'll need both a ticket for the journey, in my case a single from London to Penzance, although any valid through ticket to Penzance from further afield will be fine. You'll also need a supplement for the room, which starts from £40 and will rise in price depending on the train's popularity. So the night Riviera to Penzance actually doesn't leave Paddington until 23.45, that's quarter to midnight, but if you get here early, no worries, because you can actually enter the first class lounge from 9 p.m. The lounge is located near this striking war memorial. Keen-eyed enthusiasts will spot one door bearing the original Great Western Railway crest and another door with the royal coat of arms of Queen Victoria's reign above it. And that's because half of the lounge is actually Queen Victoria's former private waiting room. This part of the lounge is easy to miss, so be sure to stop by. There's even a fragment of the original decor preserved here, alongside more contemporary art. Victoria was a fan of trains, which exploded in popularity during her reign, although for her last journey, she used the main entrance like everybody else. The last monarch to use the private waiting room was George VI whose cipher can still be seen in the cupola. Of course, everyone knows about the royal family's history, but today's sponsor, MyHeritage, is the number one family history and DNA service in Europe, and they sent me one of their kits to try. The only hard part was opening it. Within 10 minutes, I'd unpacked, got my sample, and packed it away for mailing to the lab. It's dead simple, and don't worry, MyHeritage's privacy policy commits it to never selling or licensing your genetic data. So. With the test done, it was a waiting game. Okay, I'm in Paris, France, and my DNA results have just come back. This is really exciting, let's check them out. My heritage has the most detailed ethnicity breakdown on the market and could detect with high confidence I've got DNA from these small areas of Ireland. County Cork, here where my grandfather was from, and across the province of Ulster. There's a lot of genetic crossover as you can see here from lowland Scots people who came over with the plantations of Ulster in the 1600s, and it's interesting to see how my DNA plugs me into the bigger picture. One of the most surprising things I've found about using MyHeritage is it's not just a fancy DNA sequencing company that will break down your DNA and tell you roughly where you come from. It's actually an amazing platform for researching your family history. I saw, for the first time, thanks to other distant relatives maintaining their own family trees, my great-grandfather, which was astonishing. I even helped another cousin I'd never heard of or met fill in some blanks in his tree, which was really rewarding. Buy a DNA kit here and see if you discover as much as I did. Use coupon code WINGINIT for free shipping. As an added bonus, you can enjoy a 30-day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription service for family research and an extra discount of 50% if you continue to use it. The rest of the lounge is a modern affair and it's where most people, unaware of the significance of the Royal Annex, actually wait. And you can grab a snack or a drink while you wait here. There is one vital amenity which is not well advertised though. 
That's right, we're in a shower here at Paddington Station. If you are in one of the berths, that is the sleeper car rooms on the Night Riviera, and you speak to whoever's manning the front desk, they will let you have a towel. Toiletries already provided in the shower, just here. And yeah, pretty good way to spend your time. This is quite a short overnight journey. It's only about eight hours from departure until arrival, and I definitely recommend getting a shower. It will make things a lot nicer for you when you arrive in Penzance. There is actually a shower in Penzance, which we'll try and check out when we arrive, but definitely you're more likely to get easy access to one here at Paddington Lounge. I'm told that not many people actually request to use these. And here she is, it's the Night Riviera. She's just arrived here on Platform 1 where it almost always departs here at Paddington. Come off the depot just a moment ago and we'll stay here for a couple of hours in fact. You can board nice and early at about half past ten. We don't leave until a quarter to midnight. This is an older style uh, Mark III sleeper car, the type that you used to get on the Caledonian sleeper until they put new carriages on that a few years ago. But yeah, it's, um, it's a beautiful train. And it's my first time taking it, can you believe? This is also, uh, would you believe, the last train in regular service in the UK that has one of these, a slam door. Our train is headed by Class 57, 57603, originally built in the 1960s but rebuilt substantially about 25 years ago. We've two seated cars, a lounge and four sleeper cars, and we're tailed by another Class 57 which brought our train into London and which we'll drop off at Reading on our way out. All of GWR's 57s are named for castles along its route, and I love the little train miniature featured on the nameplate. Here we are, Coach G, berth number 13. Unlucky for some, hopefully not for me. I have to say, it's very smart here. So here you have it, tonight's sleeper berth and my home for the night. A six foot long bed with comfortable bedding is the main feature here. There's a table for breakfast in bed tomorrow, a reading light and USB and charge points. Also note the room service bell too. The controls are duplicated for the upper berth, which is folded away, as it's just me here tonight. Adjoining rooms are possible if you book over the phone. There's a connecting door here, which of course will remain locked tonight. What else is there? Well, there are a couple of coat hooks, plus a sturdy climate control system. You can control this using this switch above the window. Be warned, there's not much room, so your storage will be under the bed. But if you've problems, speak to the steward. There is a lockable cage in the front seated coach if you've got a large item. This smart and substantial basin is all yours, although there are no ensuite toilets at all on the Night Riviera. I'll show you the shared facilities a bit later. Finally, there is a shallow wardrobe, ideal for hanging tomorrow's clothes. And the real clincher, yes, these rooms lock from the outside and you're given a key. The train is very secure. Oh, and here's what the sleeper berth looks like with both beds deployed. So, any connections in the morning? Are we flying? No. Nope. Flying connections? Aha! GWR will sell you through tickets to the Isles of Scilly by telephone, which includes a flight from Land's End. I've done that flight before and it is amazing. Of course, there's a video on the channel. Just a little plug there. Go and check it out. Let's go and see if we can find some civilization, hey? The train can be boarded from 10.30, which gives you over an hour to enjoy the bar or lounge car on board. This is a really smart place to hang out and even has charge sockets, along with seats and couches arranged in a variety of configurations. There are no full meals served here, it's too late to eat dinner, but you can get drinks and bar snacks. I think I'll pass on the bar stools though, these don't look comfortable. We'll 
allows this to kick off your journey down to Cornwall. Cheers, and thanks for coming with me. We depart quietly at 23.45 and slide out gently into the night. We're due to arrive in Penzance at 7.54 tomorrow morning, having taken about eight hours to travel 304 miles at a fairly leisurely pace to ensure the sleeper service is worth it. Our first stop is Reading, the only other station you can board the sleeper to get a berth when it's heading west. We arrive there just 35 minutes after leaving Paddington. Reading is also where we'll drop the locomotive at the back, which hauled the train into Paddington in the first place. The train is booked to sit here for 15 minutes while this process is completed. So those toilet facilities, they're at the end of each coach, basic but spotlessly clean. And spot the original BR shaver socket from the 1980s, a clue to these carriages' real age despite their excellent refurbishment a few years ago. Surprisingly, the Wi-Fi on board, as well as being free, was very good and reliable. By the way, you can follow me on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Paul underscore Wingit, where I document all my exciting trips in real time. And of course, if you like the video, please leave a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It costs nothing but a click and you'll be notified of all my future videos. Meanwhile, I've got a comment about the bed. And I kind of agree with um, some people that spoke to me on Twitter and said this is narrow. This, this does feel a lot narrower than the Caledonian Sleeper. And one of the reasons for that is this kind of angled protrusion here. It feels like you're being pushed slightly towards the edge of the bed. It's not that bad, but I would say it's definitely a lot narrower than the Caledonian Sleeper. And it's narrower, or at least it feels narrower, um, than most sleeper trains that you'll find in Europe. And that's me tucked up in bed about six hours um, now to run until the host wakes me up around about seven o'clock with some breakfast and by then hopefully we should be in Cornwall. I'm going to see if I get a good night's sleep in this bed. Good night. I wake up in Cornwall having slept quite well, although it's obvious to me I'd forgotten to book the good weather with Cornwall unseasonably rainy in August. Oh well. The Night Riviera stops several times in the southwest before Penzance, so you don't have to go all the way if it doesn't suit your plans. Believe it or not, I'm on a health kick and chose the oats instead of the bacon roll or croissant for breakfast. This coffee was definitely needed with such an early start and late night. Although you, dear viewer, are probably sensible and wouldn't stay up to film the locomotive uncoupling at Reading. 
Super sensible people will be asleep even before departure, given you can board this train from 10.30pm. Now, there are two seated carriages on this train. No room supplement is needed for these, just the ticket. But I have to say, this is far from ideal and I really think the room is excellent value, especially if you can get it as I did for £40. Nonetheless, if you do take the seated option, there are charge points and full-length curtains, as well as a flip-down table. But don't expect luxury. These seats do not recline, even if the legroom is fine, and I advise using this option as a last resort only. Well, that's us just having left Camborne, and there are just 20 minutes to go now until we arrive into Penzance, the very, very southerly tip of the British Railway Network. Now, it's been a great journey, and for some reason, I've just never done this journey before overnight. Every time I've come down to Penzance or Cornwall, I've always taken the day train because it's just so wonderful and scenic. And I'm interested to know, let me know in the comments below, would you prefer this night train or would you take the day train? The penultimate stop is St Earth, the connection to the beautiful Cornish resort of St Ives. Here you can see the railway still functions mechanically. The points and signals are connected physically by levers and pivots to this signal box. Overall, I found that this journey exceeded my expectations. Putting the narrow bed to one side, the train is beautifully appointed. The staff provide five-star service, even down to managing connections away from the railway itself. And there was an obvious pride and care to how everything was done. St Michael's Mount is the signal that we're on our final approach to Benzance. We were on time all the way, and yeah, this was an excellent service, and I definitely recommend it. And there you have it, welcome to Penzance, the very southern tip of the British Rail Network. Thanks so much for coming with me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I did promise you I'd check out the showers at Penzance, so well done for sticking around after I'd said my goodbyes there. And here you go, there's no wait to get in, surprisingly, even though the train was completely full. Anyway, thanks again for sticking around. Let me know what you think of the Night Riviera, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye for now.